Good morning. This is the Reverend Phil Bjornberg from the Parish of St. George on the Eastern Shore of Virginia. And I want to um, again reach out uh, and connect uh, and update you um, all with um, uh, a word of encouragement and um, uh, a message that uh, I intend to uh, establish uh, going forward a pretty regular presence that will allow us uh, to um, connect with one another and anticipate um, with a way uh, looking forward to uh, um, an uplifting uh, way of being community. We'll uh, be using the technology as able. I'll be reaching out to folks by telephone who don't have, um, apparently don't have the video technology or computer technology access that uh, some of those of us who are more privileged do have. Um, but um, so I'm thinking that uh, times in the morning, uh, first thing, maybe uh, eight or nine o'clock, I would like your input as to uh, what would be a good time. Uh, let me know uh, what kinds of things you'd like to see uh, discussed. Um, I'm inclined to focus uh, this interaction or this um, my uh, reflections with you through the lens of recovery, the spirituality of recovery, I think uh, provides us with a framework of, of a discipline um, that will serve us very well in uh, living in the present moment um, under the con conditions that um, we have um, little to no control over. Um, I, I love the, first of all, the, the, the life-saving prayer for, for me early in recovery on a daily basis, many, many times a day, uh, the serenity prayer. Um, I encourage you all to learn it. Um, the short version is uh, God grant me. I like to think of the we version of it uh, because we're all in this together. God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And that's a attributed to a a theologian by the name of Reinhold Niebuhr. Um, I encourage you to go out and, and get the, the long version and um, incorporate that into your um, the, your toolkit as you um, endeavor to uh, keep anxiety and fear of the unknown at bay. So uh, one brief little mention on the theme of the 12 steps. Uh, I would encourage you to, uh, to, to look them up, do a little looking. Uh, Pray about how they resonate with your circumstances, um, and uh, especially when it gets to uh, um, what I believe uh, is a fundamental um, perspective we would be well served to embrace every day, which is that we are uh, practicing step one. We admit we are powerless over uh, the majority of the things that are of cosmic proportions in our lives. Uh, people's places and things uh, the, what we we do have a chance of controlling the only thing we have a chance of controlling is our response how we respond um, to a world we have little control over a universe we have little control over and um, our options for responding f are, are free um, and they're cultivated over time as we develop from uh, children having inherited certain predispositions uh, we begin to respond to our world and, and the, the environment around us from the moment we enter this world, this harsh environment. And uh, our brain uh, programs along the way, uh, means by which through um, risk and reward and relief mechanisms, um, a, a program for navigating our environment um, that uh, at a primitive level and the, the most basic level uh, protects us. Um, it protects our survival and um, uh, those survival instincts, uh, brain scientists uh, now um, are telling us um, uh, at the primitive level of our brain will hijack our ability to reason as a more advanced levels of thought process as human beings. And uh, so when we're in fear, we uh, obviously do not think very well. We, uh, we resort to the instinct, survival instincts of fight, flight or freeze. Um, right now, anxiety and fear seems to pervade our society, and uh, one of the fears is uh, is about the future, and uh, will I have enough, a pervasive condition, will I have enough? And so you see the 
the action that's resulting from that interpretation of our fear uh, that I won't have enough or we won't have enough is, is the way that this, the shelves have been evacuated from the stores. You know, that's, that's strictly a fear response. And the fear is, is the fear of, uh, I need enough to provide for, you know, and, and, and framed in a selfless way uh, for family folks, you know, it's not, it doesn't appear to be a self-seeking behavior, but it, it's, it, it, in actuality it is, uh, that my family um, comes before your family. And um, it, it seems on face a, a, a noble idea until everyone is competing with that same idea and uh, and we we compete to see how the most privileged or resourceful or resourced folks um, accumulate all all the goods and uh, and and those that are less fortunate or weaker in the species um, uh, are left to starve and uh, we are as a human species uh, so much more than that um, we are called to that. There is a, a way revealed in Jesus of Nazareth that's more than a history lesson in the face of the Roman Empire and the, the Jewish Imperial Church, uh, established church um, of the day and the laws and regulations and policies and procedures. There's a, there's a way revealed in Jesus of Nazareth, uh, which is the Christ. And the Christ in the salvation of the world the salvation of humankind is the restoration of a, us as a species and a, a community who cares for one another, uh, who, who, who sets aside me first for uh, we uh, first and foremost. Um, all, um, none are saved unless all are saved. And our reason to exist is to ensure the salvation of our neighbor and even our enemy. So. Um, for such a time as this, uh, brothers and sisters, I ask you to pause, to uh, <clears throat> develop a mindfulness, to, uh, to calibrate, get, develop the skill of detaching from your concerns for yesterday and your anxiety about tomorrow for truly the only life that we have, which is gift, regardless of the circumstances is lived in this present moment. So let's, uh, let's practice uh, living in today, uh, trusting that we have the bread we need and that if we are in need of food, uh, God has given us our brother. Uh, we are given to be brothers and sisters for one another. So if, if, I, if we each have food to eat today, let's seek out the one who um, is without food or water and let's um, give them a drink. And let's uh, share a meal with them, um, be that uh, the food for the soul. Uh, reach out and connect to, to those that God lays on your heart. Use, use your technology, your, your phones or whatever to, um, to call people and, and ask them if they're okay. Call someone and tell them uh, that you're not okay. If you're not okay, um, uh, call someone and say, I, I'm afraid. Just that connection. And if you call me and say you're afraid, I'm going to say I'm afraid too. Um, but I'm not going to let fear dictate um, how it is that I react in a way that takes away from uh, the mandate that we care for one another. And uh, nor to uh, disregard how everything I do um, it, is either a disease or a life-giving force in the presence of another. So um, embrace that reality um, that we are being confronted with. For that has always been the way it is. Um, but for a time such as this, in the face of the coronavirus, uh, let us use this uh, acute situation to remind us that this is the, the nature of the grain of the universe as it's created is that we are all connected. We always have been. We always will be, and uh, whether the, the dominant voice in our culture is the, the, the viral disease that we're now confronted with that uh, threatens our bodies, um, and, and literally um, our response which threatens our souls or, or will be life-giving in, in an eternal sense. Uh, may God bless you and protect you and your families, and um, give me some feedback as to how you would like to see 
when you'd like to see these little um, broadcasts, how, what content you would, what are the, what are the burning questions? Um, one of the uh, wonderful exercises, I guess I would like to uh, suggest uh, you contemplate the answers to these questions and give me your feedback. Um, answer these three questions. Uh, what is breaking your heart? Who inspires you? What brings you fully alive? So bring that into prayer and uh, take notes and journal. Uh, scribble a few notes as to uh, what comes to your mind in a quiet time. I would suggest that you sit still with each of those questions for about uh, three minutes and uh, jot down what, what happens in those three minutes. And then um, I will uh, encourage you on a future um, Zoom session, invite you to, uh, to join in and share your answers with one another and, and dialogue using the technology. So God bless. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.